You see the block diagram here on the top. It has an input side with 800 volt DC, which is, if you take a look on the back side of the board, we have, we have components that are providing isolated bias supplies. Hello guys, welcome back to Foolish Engineers videos. I'm here today at PCIM Nuremberg 2024, and I'm going to showcase PI's booth, which is Texas Instruments, and they are going to showcase their new product so we are going to see what I'm going to experience on the booth. Let's start. This video is made possible because of Texas Instruments. They are pioneers of semiconductor world. Now we are seeing the second demo, which is again shown by Herald. And he will explain about the DC to DC converter from the EV application point of view. So what can you tell me about it? So this demo, what we are showing here, fits more into the area of EV charging. This is about EV charging stations and fast chargers. If you look into how a charger is being built, it is connected somewhere to the grid. So you need an AC to DC converter. And that AC to DC converter is generating from three phase systems, which could be 400 volt AC, a DC bus voltage that is 800 volt. And this is where this demo is now connected to. From the 800 volt, you need to generate another voltage that is charging the battery in the EV electric vehicle, which is typically these days 400 volt. So this is a DC-DC converter that, that takes the 800 volt voltage from a AC-DC converter into a battery voltage 400 volt, and it does it in an isolated fashion. It needs to be isolated because a car battery needs to be isolated from the grid. Standards mandate that. So this is a demo where we demonstrate basically the building block, the isolated DC-DC building block in an EV, EV fast charger. And here we have basically used a, an approach which is a so-called phase-shifted dual active bridge. Okay. Let me explain that a little bit to you. You see the block diagram here on the top. It has an input side this 800 volt DC, which is coming from the uh, three phase converter AC to DC. It is uh, realized by a full bridge on the primary side, and this is being built in silicon carbide MOSFETs. Then you see in the middle a transformer, which is providing all the isolation. You see a coupling inductor here as well, and blocking capacitors to make sure that the transformer is not DC second. The output side is again a full bridge. In this case, it is 650 volt rated um, silicon carbide MOSFETs. And we basically operate from the 800 volt, generating an AC signal across the transformer at 100 kilohertz, re being rectified on the secondary side to a 500 volt for the battery in the car. In this demo, we are basically using two converters. The way we operate or demonstrate the, the power flow, we, we put it in a so-called back-to-back configuration. So we are inserting some power here, circulate 10 kilowatt back into the input. So the, the 10 kilowatts are basically it's circulated. In it's in a closed loop. So this one is basically operating in a step down conversion okay. and that one is operating in a step up conversion. Okay. So okay. we show both designs are working in bi-directional fashion. Right. Bi-directional, why? Because we want to demonstrate vehicle to grid as well. Mm. Think about the fact that this car battery could provide energy back to your home or mm. back to the grid. So this is why this needs to be bi-directional. There are losses in the system. And these losses are inserted by a power supply that we operate at 800 volt. So all the losses that occur in that system are compensated by the power supply. And with that, we can actually show that we can circulate 10 kilowatt here. Mm -hmm. And we will do this in a minute. Okay. Um, the converter itself, if we zoom a little bit on here, in the middle, you see this big transformer. This is the transformer that we have in the middle here. The coupling inductor is also integrated into this transformer on the top. You see on the top, the coupling transformer and on the bottom, there are the transformers, the transformer bindings. The heat sinks you see at the input and at the output are basically used 
to cool the sick fat devices that we are using on the input and output stages. If you take a look on the back side of the board, we have, we have components that are providing isolated bias supplies for the sick fats, for the gate drivers for the sick fats. The gate drivers themselves are sitting there. We use uh, silicon carbide um, sick fat drivers from Texas Instruments UCC 21710. And we have also current measurement, which is in package hall sensor, which are sitting left and right to measure the transformer current. But we have also shunt based current sensors AMC 1302 and AMC 1306 to measure basically the currents that are measure uh, that are flowing on the input and the output side and this is used to regulate basically input power and output power and now we will see how exactly it looks like and how exactly the current is flowing in current is flowing out yep. how the system is taking and handling the power because yep. no matter how much theory we learn how much theory we see we have to check it by our own eyes yes That's true so let me let me show you what we, again we are using co-composer studio to visualize currents and voltages on the design we have here on the left side we have the input side reflected the input side 800 volt DC bus voltage at the input. The current is ramping slowly up. We, we started that half a minute ago, uh, going from a zero amp all the way up. We are currently already at, at 12, 12 amps almost. So that means at 12 amps, 800 volt, this is 10 kilowatt. Okay. What is going in, yeah. into the converter. We see on this chart, the output side. It's a 500 volt what we are regulating at the output. The current was going down from, from zero and now we are at minus 16 amp roughly, meaning at 500 volt, 16 amp, this is the 10 kilowatt we see at the output. So this converter is taking in the current to the system and this is supplying at the output. At the, the output, same. from the output of one converter to the input of the next one, right? where they are connected back to back. So this is basically the power that goes out. This is the power that goes in. So it's, 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 it's about 10 kilowatt what we have. We see here that it operates here. This is, it, we started at six kilowatt. We are now at 10 kilowatt. Okay. Um, here you see actually the efficiency for both converters. It's, it's combined. It's combined. Oh. So it's 96% for both converters. So each one is running at a 98% efficiency, that's, which is that's very, very high yeah. for such a high, high load actually. All right. Well, thank you so much for this amazing demo. I surely learned a lot about this EV DC to DC converter. Thank you so much. Thank for you. That. My pleasure. Yeah. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you picked up something useful from this video. The reference of this design is added in the description below. While checking the reference, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. It's right over there. I'll see you next time. Till then, stay hungry, stay foolish.